The Asphalt Art Program is administered by FC Moves, the Transportation Planning Department of the City of Fort Collins. The Paint Pot Program is a grant-funded asphalt art project made possible through a grant from the National Association of City Transportation Officials. With special thanks to Bike Fort Collins and Jillian Betterly for programmatic support. This storytelling project is a collection of voices from the neighborhoods where the asphalt murals were painted. Several of the voices are indigenous, Hispanic, and Latino community members with long generational ties to the neighborhoods called Tres Colonias, or the Spanish colonies. This episode features Ana Kelso during the installation of the mural Mi Frida Linda on Hickory Street. Uh, my name is Anna Kelso. Today is, what, Sunday, October 2nd, and we're out here um, doing another street mural in Fort Collins. I moved here to Fort Collins because it is one of the most bicycle-friendly communities in the country. Um, I knew I wanted to raise my kids here. Um, I'm so grateful for the fact that they get to grow up in a cohesive community. Um, I'm from Miami originally, and that was very much not part of my childhood, and so it meant a great deal to me to give that to my kids. And now it means a great deal to me to make sure that all kids in Fort Collins have access to that. When I was in grad school at Penn State, um, the city building or the city repair project, village building convergence out of Portland, Oregon came and did a presentation about placemaking and community building and rethinking built environment. And so I was always very, that was always very much in my mind about creating space and community. Um, and so when I moved here, I really tried to bring those projects here. Um, and when I took my position with Bike Fort Collins, started advocating for street murals. Um, and I asked our former bike and pedestrian planner, Tessa Greger, if she could identify some intersections that were particularly problemsome, um, you know, making them safer for, for bikes and pedestrians. And she pointed out the intersection of Magnolia, Canyon, and Sherwood, um, which is a really uh, tricky intersection to navigate. And so when we can create intersections that signal to drivers that these are places where kids are walking and biking, um, people behave differently behind the wheel. Um, and it also helps us communicate and, and get to know our community better when a place feels like it's meant for humans. Um, so we started down that path. Um, and then the city was like, hold the phone. Let's figure this out. Let's make a program. So then I connected them with Greg Reisman, the transportation guy in Portland, who started their program. And so we started these conversations. And, um, and then Nick Hyman um, came in and helped us create the program formally through the city. Um, and then they contracted back out to me to do like the community piece. So it was a really like kind of neat evolution of how it how it happened and how it all came together. Um, yeah, and so our first round of murals came through the, the a grant from the National Association of Tra City Transportation Officials, which was really cool to get to work on because there's some, there was a lot of really great mentorship through some of the leading names in transportation equity, like Tamika Butler, and so it was an honor to get to work on it. Um, uh, and so we went out into the community really looking for areas that were underserved and, um, you know, historically uh, disadvantaged and not heard. Um, and the idea is that just as important as the picture that we're putting on the asphalt is the capacity building and community making that we're doing. Um, and so at the end of the day, we have a pretty picture on the asphalt, but we also have um, folks in the community that maybe have better skills to advocate for what they need in their community and have more faith in the idea that if we all come together and advocate for something, it can happen and it can be done and it's not years and years of meetings that we talk about it, we do it, it happens. Um, and it's, it's a collective effort. I think what's really exciting about being on the city side now is that I get to build these, build community within like departments in the city and have these conversations with folks, you know, from the streets department and traffic department and 
um, and make time to have those conversations and to brainstorm and to realize that we're not like on opposite ends of the table, that we all care about the same things. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out how to not make it a pain for the snow removal people, you know, but like we're all humans and we're all trying to piece the puzzle together. And so I really enjoy that aspect of like connecting all these dots just like departmentally too. Um, but my hope and dream is that we can use these projects to um, quickly change our built environment, um, quick build, low cost ways of making our streets um, more on a human scale, safer for bikes and pedestrians. Um, because like some of these big capital projects, you want to build a huge roundabout, which is awesome. But that's that's a lot of time and money we're talking about. Um, so if we can couple these murals with plastic delineators, I think they're we're seeing it all over the country and the literature is supporting it, that there's significant reductions in um, traffic fatalities and crashes um, in conjunction with um, asphalt art and plastic delineators and bull belts and curb extensions and just ways to calm traffic, slow traffic and signal to everyone in the community that this built environment is, is for the people. It's not just cars. In the lead up to this mural here at Hickory Street, um, we had a number of different um, like after school arts projects. Um, not all of them particularly successful. A lot of them were just a disaster, but it was, you know, right when kids were getting out of school. And so it was an opportunity for a lot of moms really to talk about, you know, what are the issues in the community? Like bikes and pedestrians aside, like what are we concerned about? What, you know, how can we make life a little bit better here on this little dot on the map? Um, so and then just learning the process um, and and folks in the community coming together to talk about how and why we're doing all this. Um, and then the extra like it sometimes it just kind of like mushrooms in my mind, all the different layers of this, like blows my mind that, you know, there's also like the the cultural piece and and the, you know, the history and the culture here, the Hispanic history and agriculture and having conversations with kids who are fourth generation you know, um, Latinx uh, families that came here because of the sugar beet farming and talking about the history of the sugar beets as we're painting a sugar beet on the street um, and and hearing those stories from, you know, previous, like several generations back is pretty, pretty incredible. First, with the location of these murals, like the one here at Hickory Street, it um, these first, like, generation murals were really the traffic department getting comfortable with even seeing what it looks like to put paint on pavement. So they're not necessarily the most strategic in terms of changing the way we interact with an intersection. Um, but there's still, you know, the opportunity to to humanize this end of street that otherwise feels like it dead ends um, and bringing people together. Um, and then also learning just like the lifespan of a mural, um, which is apparently shorter than we <laughs> it was not a graceful process. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just just trying to figure it out. And I think, you know, it's so hard, like the perfect letter never gets sent. And so sometimes you just have to open your mouth and let words come out and and then figure out the pieces as you go. Because I think um, there's it's, you know, working in Hickory Village and at Andersonville, these were neighborhoods where um, we really didn't have a whole lot of, I didn't have um, access to a whole lot of um, social capital that already existed. So it was really about just walking around and talking to people. Um, and sometimes those conversations were a little bit clumsy. Um, but I think the more we talk, the more we can get it, you know, and, and if we don't talk and get a little clumsy, then we don't make those mistakes and figure out the path. And I think it really starts with just open conversations about what's going on in the community. And like Tamika Butler said to me, she was like, you know, you can only move at the speed of trust. Um, so it's important that these these projects happen in a timely fashion and they're not just something that we talk about forever. Um, but also you can't rush it. Like there's, there's the human piece behind it. And so building relationships um, is just as important. Um, yeah. And so as time went on, we were able to kind of like hone those conversations more and more to like, all right, well, how can we help your kids get to the park a little safer? For example, the Roosevelt Maple one, Brian Barrett is the artist there. And and we had the 
you know, it was it was great that he's also a resident of Roosevelt and he has kids that go to Putnam Elementary. Um, and so, you know, he says that every day on the way to school, they would pick a color that they would hop from, um, that they would take the purple route that day or the red route. Um, and uh, and just like ha- and the kids from that neighborhood, um, I hear stories about how proud they are of the shapes that they painted and how it reminds them of those days and um, of the two days that we last painting last year and this year and then like with the Romero um mural uh that's Somos Fort Collins um it's been it's been so nice getting to know Christina and she's the community lead there and um she'd gotten a new phone and like thought my number was spam so like it was hard to get in touch with her for a long time um so I just went over one day like there's these moments where I'll just be with her in her living room with her grandkids um and it just feels very familial and familiar and um you know gathering apples from different community members as I'm getting them to sign the petition and um yeah there have been so many like human stories to come from this um yeah and then having my own kids come out you know and help paint alongside but with Hickory Village um Luis Santa Cruz I, we weren't able to find someone from Hickory Village to be the artist. Um, and so I went to CSU and found an art professor who was able to help me find, um, you know, recent um, fine art grads that identified as Latinx and would be able to um, work with the community in a way that felt authentic. Um, so my relationship with Luis is like, it's been, I, it's been so... Um, enriching you know to to work with someone who is so good with with the people and um and so talented and just um yeah i i I couldn't be more grateful for for how organic these these murals have been because of the good luck of just the good people that have come along um you know i think it's also interesting there there have been times of especially when you when you start to dig down into the stories and the issues of of a community that there are these um, hardships and these generational traumas that have happened, um, and so there's been moments of friction and conflict that I had n- like never even considered, um, and and um, but those are those are the opportunities to like bridge the best gaps. Um, so I think you know we had we had some. T- conflictive relationships at the beginning and then and then those have turned out to be some of our our best advocates and our our greatest partners you think you might know all the pieces of the puzzle or all the people that are at play in a situation um but going into a neighborhood that has a lot of like history with being oppressed um you know intentionally or unintentionally by local government um, but I think the more you dig into like the different layers of a community, especially one that's been, um, you know, marginalized for so long, there's, there's so many different layers to the issue that it's uncomfortable, but it's necessary to put yourself in, in those positions because there's no other way to learn. I'm always like assessing it. Like, are we just, are we just painting the street or like, you know, like always kind of reviewing, like, is, is this doing what it says it's, it's doing? And, um, you know, and I think it is, and I think it has so much power and potential to make some serious changes, um, as far as how we interact with our built environment. Um, in a way that wouldn't happen in a way and in a scale that wouldn't happen if we were waiting for infrastructure changes because we have our built environment um, and now we have to figure out how to exist um, in a way that feels more human. I don't know. I think, I think as a generation, we feel kind of powerless, you know, in a way to, to shape um, the future for, for generations to come or to make a change or, um, but I really do believe that Fort Collins is on the cusp of um, being like taking us to that next level of, to use a wonky term like bicycle mode share. Um, I really think that Fort Collins can be a trendsetter um, in showing the world what it looks like to for 20% of trips to be made by bike. Um, 
And I see bikes as an indicator species. Like if you have a lot of bikes, you have a healthy community. Um, and so what we're trying to do here is to create one of the healthiest communities in the country um, and then be an example to the rest of the country. So that's the hope. <laughs> Otherwise, we just had a lot of fun Sunday afternoons and <laughs> with a lot of paint. <laughs> Neither are bad. <laughs>